five, four, three, two. Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. Today is July 2nd. It's a Thursday. We had export sales out this morning. It was also a holiday shortened trade day. We saw the markets close an hour early. Keep in mind that tomorrow the markets will not be open. The markets will reopen. And when I say markets, I'm talking grain markets. Uh, the grain markets will be closed on Friday, reopen uh, Sunday in the evening session. So do pay attention to that. Uh, Sunday in the evening session, we could get some moves here depending on the weather that we receive over the weekend. We'll talk more about expectations for weather over the next couple of weeks later on in the show. But before we get to that, let's turn over to the Grain Hedge Trading Platform and see where we closed off the day. Corn trading up five and a half cents on the day. Soybeans down one and a quarter and wheat in Chicago here mostly unchanged down a half penny. Now we did get some inf in, uh, interesting news out today. Informa revised their production forecast. They took into account the USDA acreage and quarterly grain stocks report. Basically what we saw here is Informa revising their corn production down to 13.412 billion bushels from 13.564 billion bushels. Now they did revise their average uh, yield here from 166.4 bushels per acre down to 165.4 bushels per acre. We may actually have to see uh, further revisions if we get the kind of weather that looks to be in the forecast. It's going to be interesting to see how much precipitation we get over this weekend because there are some very saturated areas out there. The crop does not look great in many parts of the eastern grain belt and if we continue to get precipitation over the next couple weeks that could have significant impacts on yield in those states. Let's take a look at the Informa soybean production estimates here which were at 3.808 billion bushels down from 3.871 billion. Now part of the revision was a result of the harvested acreage uh, which they did revise lower there. Wheat, they're looking for 1.477 billion bushels from 1.505 billion bushels uh, in their previous forecast. Also keep in mind that you, uh, Informa did raise their Ukrainian forecast up to 26, uh, up 2 million bushels here from the forecast, so uh, from their last forecast. Let's take a look here now at the weather. Uh, you'll notice uh, Thursday, today, we were expected to see more precipitation southeast, uh, well, really uh, throughout the Green Belt, but a lot of it will be concentrated on that southeastern part of Missouri, the southern part of uh, Illinois, uh, parts of Indiana. You'll notice that we're going to be continuing to get precipitation in the forecast here. Uh, and, and when you look out that 6 to 10 day forecast, you'll notice a heavy amount of precipitation above average is, uh, is really centered over Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. All areas that have received a good amount of precipitation really don't need any more. Ground is saturated and the crop is getting damaged as a result of the surplus moisture. Look at this chart. This is something we want to pay attention to. Uh, keep in mind, Illinois, West Central, uh, West, West, Southwestern, uh, and Indiana Southwestern. Look at the, uh, the two weeks uh, prior precipitation. You'll notice we see anywhere between three inches uh, to four, point, four and a quarter inches over the last two weeks. These are areas uh, that the crop is really uh, saturated, getting drowned out here. You look at the precipitation for the next two weeks and you see as much precipitation, if not more, in certain circumstances. All these areas highlighted in yellow are areas that look to receive or look to continue uh, to get more precipitation. This is going to have a very negative effect on yield uh, prospects across the country um, when you take into account these areas that produce a significant amount of corn typically just not getting optimal growing conditions here uh, this year. Now we did have export sales out this morning so let's turn our attention over to those see where we uh, see where we came out whether or not that met expectations you'll notice corn came out it was on the high side of analyst expectations we saw an actual export sales of 594,000 metric tons uh, analysts were expecting anywhere between 300,000 to 600,000 metric tons, so this was very positive for corn. For soybeans, not so much. We saw net cancellations this week. You know, we've been looking to see uh, net cancellations for quite some time now. Soybean export sales week after week after week continued to outperform here, causing the USDA to have to increase their, their export sales forecast in their latest WASDI report. 
but here we have an instance where this week we just didn't get those kind of consistent sales. Uh, was a little bit disappointing. Early on we saw the grain markets trading lower here uh, as a result of that. And when you look at wheat, you'll notice wheat came in within analyst expectations. 363,000 metric tons. Uh, really nothing too exciting, uh, but nothing really that, that would cause a significant amount of selling pressure here. Wheat just kind of came in uh, skating by. Now when you look at the corn cumulative export commitments, you'll notice that 45.7 million metric tons have been sold uh, at this time of the year. Now this is behind last year's pace of 47.2 during the same time period, but we are still ahead of the uh, anticipated pace that that pace needed to meet USDA expectations. So corn sales still positive here, uh, and, and this week's sales, they were good, they weren't outstanding, uh, but they're going to keep us ahead of pace here moving forward. When you look at soybeans, you'll notice with that cancellation, you can see a slight drop in cumulative export sales. 50.5 uh, million metric tons have been sold uh, at this point in the marketing year. What we need to meet USDA expectations is roughly 48.9 million metric tons. Uh, so we are still ahead of pace, and if we get some sales here in the coming weeks, that could continue to bump us above USDA expectations. So we're going to have to see uh, whether or not export sales are able to continue, or whether or not uh, this cancellation is the beginning of a trend, or if it's just kind of a blip on the radar. Now keep in mind also new crop sales came out, nothing too exciting here, corn came in within analyst expectations and soybeans here 127,000 metric tons, that was below the lowest side of analyst expectations. So nothing really uh, exciting there for soybeans. Uh, when you look at it, I, this is a weather market at this point, uh, we're focusing on wet areas, uh, conditions that are absolutely saturated in certain parts of the U.S. What we're going to be watching over the weekend is the weather. Will we get more precipitation? How will the weather forecast, the extended weather forecast, look like on Monday? This is all going to play an important role in the price direction here early next week. Guys, that wraps up today's show. If you have any questions about what we talked about, please give the office a call. The number is 877-472-4607. And if you haven't done so already, Take a demo. Take a demo of our 14-day free trial. See what it's like to have live quotes in the palm of your hand. See what it's like to have live quotes in your, uh, in your office there, being able to execute trades to kind of uh, put, put in that price protection when it comes to uh, the price risk that you have as a producer. Now, we can talk a little bit more about that if you give us a call. Uh, keep in mind there is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options. And, there, and, and futures and options really is not for everybody. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Uh, you can read our risk disclosure on our website at grainhedge.com. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you here on uh, Monday.